The Saints bite the bullet and cut Junior Gallette. What it means for this team going forward and what Keenan Lewis and Kenny Vaccaro think about the team's locker room mindset. Plus our training camp roundtable preview where we'll discuss the team's top concerns and which players might break out in West Virginia. And a rising rodeo star from St. Charles Parish who's just barely a teenager. This is the last word on sports. Fourth Down on Four starts now. A stunner the week before training camp begins. The Saints cut Junior Gallette. Gallette admits he was stunned too. I'm Doug Mouton. Welcome to Fourth Down on Four. It's a bold move. Release one of your most talented players in an attempt to improve your locker room character. Lions Yellen reports. From rags to riches. Undrafted free agent to defensive captain. Junior Gallette's meteoric rise to stardom in New Orleans was a tale the city once fully embraced. And one just last month, Gallette himself believed would continue. I'm thankful that I'm able to you know, enjoy the fruits of my labor and be around a functional organization that, you know, just believe in me and um, know that Sean, you know, wants me here and smoke all offseason and, and just thankful that I'm, you know, just getting an opportunity to continue my career here. At the time, those remarks seemed heartfelt. Now, more like wishful thinking. It was just two seasons ago Saints fans witnessed the sack man become a household name as he terrorized quarterbacks to the tune of 12 sacks. His signature body bag dance became his calling card. The Haitian-born linebacker relished the attention, craved the spotlight football afforded him. His presence on social media grew, as did his penchant for sharing the most intimate details of his life. And while this would gain him notoriety and quite the following, it would also contribute to his undoing and was a constant source of frustration for his employers. The fact is the NFL is full of shooting stars who burn bright and fade fast. Gallette is simply the latest. His fall from grace, a story that's unfortunately all too common. Those crowd-pleasing images of him bludgeoning quarterbacks have now been replaced by significantly more disturbing ones. While Gallette continues to deny his involvement, the evidence, which he posted on his own, now deleted Instagram account, is irrefutable. Whether that 2013 incident, which only recently came to light, was the last straw, or yet another in a long line of poor decisions, the Saints had simply had enough. Gallette had become a distraction, a divisive force with the potential to wreak havoc in the locker room. That's the last thing the Saints need if what they don't want is a repeat of last season. That's why he's gone. But so is that happy-go-lucky man whose magnetic smile and electric personality made him a favorite among fans and teammates alike. The once cheerfully humble up-and-comer has morphed into a resentful and vindictive outcast, woefully devoid of self-awareness and unwilling to accept responsibility for his actions. While there's no incontrovertible evidence of Gallette's involvement in his girlfriend's weekend Twitter rant, it's hard to believe he played no part, particularly after her account was deleted late Saturday evening, though not before she revealed seemingly intimate locker room details, taking aim at Sean Payton as well as other prominent Saints, including Keenan Lewis. However, Lewis took the high road and expressed nothing but affection for his soon-to-be former teammate. That's a guy who played with a lot of energy. Great guy, you know, you know the media, the, the outside going to look at him as a bad guy. Great guy, and, you know, I'm pretty sure he's going to have success in this league. You know, can't always judge a guy off one mistake or maybe two. That don't define who you are as a person. And, you know, everybody make mistakes, and, you know, I wish them the best. Now the Saints are left to pick up the pieces, and replacing Gallette's production will be difficult. It's devastating. That's a guy, you know, we we expected to help us come out that and win. You know, a great guy, very productive in his league, one of the best at what he do. And when you lose a guy like that, it's always tough. Lions yelling, fourth down on four. And on our pre-training camp panel this evening, thanks to our three gentlemen, Joel Erickson covers the Saints for The Advocate, Christian Garrick covers the Saints for WWO Radio, and of course, Lions Yellen. You talked to Junior Gallette 
uh, right after the Saints released him, he said the Saints offered to put him on IR, correct? They, take take us through that. Yeah, they did. They said uh, when he got the phone call, uh, he was talking, and, and they offered. They said, you know, you're hurt. You're dealing with the pec injury. Offered to put him on IR. Said they were still going to cut him, and he basically said, play me or cut me it is exactly the words he used uh, when he recounted the story to me. But, you know, that just shows that they were ready to get rid of him. He was ready to kind of be out of there if he wasn't going to be a part of this team. Crazy how this played out, Christian. First of all, have you seen a guy play out quite like this? Because this was a guy in a league where secrecy or, or <laughs> not saying much is the norm. And on a team where they guard their privacy, he was so public. Have you seen one quite like this? Not, not that I can recall on this team in particular. Uh, there's been some throughout the NFL. But it shows you how little the Saints think of him when they're willing to part with that kind of money. Wow. Think about this. Most of these decisions are driven by money, all right, in the NFL with sure. the salary cap. Now they're willing to eat. No team is willing to eat that kind of money unless they really do not want that player around. And that's the case with Junior Gillette. That is incredible. And, Joel, now how do you replace that? This is a league where premier pass rushers are the thing. They, they are the premium, and you give him up. Are you really counting on Heoli Kakaha, a second-round pick who's never played in the NFL, to be that guy? That seems awful dangerous. You, you kind of have to count on him. He's got the best resume of the guys who are kind of in that spot. Uh, you've got a couple of veterans, Anthony Spencer and Paris Harrelson, who are kind of getting up there you know but their best days might be behind them Davis tall the other rookie he's got a shoulder injury he's even lower picked Kakaha seems like the guy who's gonna have to step up into that role if you're gonna have somebody coming off the edge how dangerous is that and Anthony Spencer by the way one half of one sack in the last two years this is a guy did it two three years ago but hasn't done much the last two it, it, may, it makes me wonder if they're maybe gonna play some four three base and, and go back to that I know Rob Ryan's a three four guy but with the personnel they have right now you know, it, it's kind of hard to think where they're going to get that production on the outside. When this strange uh, pectoral, mysterious pectoral injury <laughs> happened with Junior Gallet, um, and the know, video is Kikaha, out now. Kikaha was playing, getting the snaps, and it's hard to determine that in minicamp and OTAs, etc. But you, you're right. Look, Kikaha is an inexperienced player. You, it's the unknown. You got two veterans, as Joel pointed out, that you don't quite know exactly how much gas they have left in the tank. So that's a big question mark. But Given by what they like or what they talked about with Kikaha coming in when they picked him in the second round, remember I call your attention back to Sean Payton saying this is a player that you hope you get a chance to coach because he has so much upside. Well, and you've also got you're going to be probably playing Stephon Anthony at middle linebacker. Um, this is a defense that was terrible last year. Obviously, they made some upgrades, but you're talking about playing two rookies at premier spots where you've got to get production. Well, the good thing is middle linebacker is one of those spots that guys can kind of come in, and, and if they're the right kind of guy, they can play right away. Uh, you, you worry a little bit more about pass rusher. That tends to be one of those positions they kind of have to develop a little bit. But it, at this point, he's thrown into the fire. They're going to have to put him in and just see how he, how he swims. <laughs> see how he swims. And you, know, and, and, you know, he did work with Scott Shanley before yep. he even joined the Saints for off-season workouts. And you talked about him. He worked with Joe Vitt as well. So he got a little head start on it. So hopefully he can be ready by the time training camp starts. I think you could see a combination of Anthony Spencer on rundowns and then Kikaha, uh, you know, in the dime nickel situations where there's a pass rusher, obvious. Uh, opportunity to get after the passer third and eight third and long uh, I think that's where the role might start for Kika it was one of the strengths of the team you thought having Jordan and Gallette it's certainly not now we're back with a lot more with our panel <laughs> and great stuff from Keenan Lewis ahead on fourth down on four last year was kind of rough but you know we we add things out we'll be ready to go next Keenan Lewis and Kenny Vaccaro on the current locker room vibe Plus, biggest concerns, breakout players, and playoff predictions. Lots more with our Saints panel ahead. And later, one of Louisiana's best 13-year-old athletes is a barrel racer who hopes to turn pro. Her story ahead on 4th and on 4. No Saints player does more in the community than Keenan Lewis. Today, Lewis hosted his kids' camp at Berman Stadium in Algiers free to kids who got a chance to work with Lewis and safety Kenny Vaccaro. 
Lions yelling caught up with both guys as they get ready for training camp. We just want to go 50. We just put 50 on everything. 50 is Super Bowl. We know that's where our mission. That's what we got to get. Guys, we bought in. Last year was kind of rough, but, you know, we, we asked things out. We'll be ready to go. I just want to win as a team. I think when you win, uh, everybody eats. Everybody, it, it's... It fluctuates throughout the whole the whole locker room, so that's all I want to do is win, and everything else take care of yourself. What did y'all learn from last season that you can take into this training camp? When you're down one, don't put your head down for two. So that's something we took. You know, some game we gonna lose, but we can't be down on ourselves. Cause like last year, we still had with the loss that we had, we still had a chance to play for the first place in the division. I feel like, you know, we went on like a three-game losing streak. Put our head down. We can't. Keep our head up and fight. And we've had a good off season. Everybody's meshed together well. Um, as far as the defense, um, it's it's light years from what it was a year ago. And I'm excited, man. Uh, there's a good feeling in the locker room right now. Back with our panel, Kenny Vaccaro says the mood in the locker room <laughs> is better. You think getting rid of Junior Gallette, even the way he rushes the passer, was the right move? It's the team move. Sean Payton uh, is dialed in, and it shows every veteran, every player on this roster, no matter if you're a team captain, doesn't matter that you make a lot of money, we're willing to part ways with you if you don't conform to our Saints, the quote-unquote Saints ways, and the Saints character values, etc. So it speaks a lot to, uh, I think, a team move. And yeah, they're going to lose that production. There's no doubt about it. That's a concern when you, when you get rid of double-digit sacks the last two seasons. However, for the team chemistry aspect of it, I find it really interesting that nobody on Twitter, none of his teammates, came to his defense after this release, after he was released. Normally we see well wishes, something to that effect, hey, loved you, love you, bro, whatever. We didn't see that with Junior Gallette at all. And you know what? And you can tell. You ask these guys questions about Junior Gallette, and they're forced to answer them and put in that position. They're, I think they're tired of that. They're tired of that distraction. You don't want that in your locker room when every day you have to dodge a question about a particular teammate. So, so that's going to be a big plus for all these guys going forward is they're not going to have to stand there and explain <laughs> away all of Junior Gallette's annex. Again, distractions. Sean Payton hates them. Let's talk about it. This would have been a distraction, whether he would have gotten suspended <laughs> potentially by the NFL or just answering questions about the pectoral. He didn't want to have anything to do with any junior galette pertaining questions whatsoever. Would have lingered all and, season. And last year, clearly, the locker room was a disaster. They needed to improve that. This is, I guess, the last move in doing that. Okay, Joel, start us off. Give us your biggest concern going into training camp this year. I think all of us drank the Kool-Aid last year and thought the team was going to be better than they were. <laughs> now, going into this year, you, you just have to be more cautious. What is your biggest concern when you look at the roster? Well, right now, it's the pass rush. It, it has to be, and it's it's got to be more than just the edge guys. You worry about Kakaha and all the those outside guys but the other way they, they got to get more push up the middle you got to have guys from the rushing from the inside now you figure cam jordan's gonna have to stay on the outside isn't gonna be able to rush from the inside as much so you know kevin williams akeem hicks uh tyler davison anybody they can get to get some pusher up the middle uh would help that pass rush but with galette gone you've, you've got to find a way to replace those sacks no question yeah, i agree with joel uh, in terms of the interior push along the defensive line people forget that that was why they were, those two were so successful, Junior Gallette and Cam Jordan in 20, uh, 2013, was because of that push they got up the middle. They got to find a way to get that back. But also, look, we just talked about it. There's a that's a big void now. That's 10 sacks, 12 sacks, 22 sacks in the last two seasons from Junior Gallette. He's your he was your best pass rusher, albeit that he was kind of limited in doing just that. That's a production that's going to be hard to replace, and it's unknown right now with Anthony Spencer and Kikaha. You know, I, I think a little bit of concern to go away from that a little bit is got to be at the, the middle linebacker position. You know, is Ellerby going to be healthy? Can he come in, play alongside Hawthorne and, and Humber? Are those guys going to get the job done? Is Stephon Anthony going to be able to come in and play right away and, and give that unit a boost? There's just so many question marks right there, and it's such an important position because with, with, with the way the passing game is now and, and, and so much attack out of the backfield those guys have to be able to defend the passing game and I thought maybe the most disappointing thing about especially on defense last year was the safety play Jarris Bird only played a handful of games and was not good <laughs> Kenny Vaccaro admitted he had a terrible season those two have to be much better for this defense to to emerge all right now give me a guy that you think might break out we'll start with you Joel a guy who's got a shot 
to to elevate themselves this year. Well, it's kind of a, it's kind of an obvious pick, but uh, Josh Hill uh, at tight end, he, he doesn't have to be. There's this idea kind of floating around that he has to be Jimmy Graham. He has to catch 85 balls. He doesn't have to do that. He can catch 50, and as long as he's a, a threat in the red zone and catches somewhere between five and ten touchdown passes. That's a breakout season for him, and the Saints offense can work around that. Given by how it worked out last year as far as predictions for breakouts and <laughs> yeah. records and everything else, yeah. I'm hesitant, but I'll do it. Um, look, Delvin Bro. I mean, yeah. look, he's going to yeah. be an interesting player to watch, and will he be that nickel, that third corner? And look, I, once again, Sean Payton talked about in the Super Bowl, so many of those snaps, 70% of them were in the nickel uh, kind of set for a defense, so he's going to play a lot. a lot. He figures to be that third corner behind uh, Lewis and Browner. So that's a player I think that, that could really become, by the end of the season, really become a household name, not just in New Orleans, but across the NFL. I hope you're right, because he is a terrific guy, great too. Story. A New Orleans guy, great story. Give me one. Uh, Brandon Coleman, I, I think that guy, mm -hmm. I mean, he absolutely looks the part. He's 6'6", six, six, about 225 pounds, and you talk about getting production in the red zone. He's so big. I think he could be a great target for Drew Brees down there, and, and you know, with, with Colston getting up there in age, they're going to need a big physical receiver like that to push the ball down the field and, and be able to be physical off the line of scrimmage. Nice. And actually, mine is Akeem Hicks, which is a guy that I thought last year, too, didn't quite break out. I, I still think he's so enormously talented. I'm waiting for it. Maybe I'm just a year late. All right, we're under 30 seconds. Yes or no? That's all you got. Is this a playoff team? What do you think? Yes. 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 Wow, we got three yeses. With a with uh, like a couple of those dots, you know, the periods, like, yes, if. I got to have an if. Like, I'm, not a super I, strong I, I yes? think it would be a slam dunk yes if it wasn't for last season. Everybody's no. a little skeptical. Sure. Uh, but, but I they think this is so a very talented team. You got a bunch Mine's of questions. more in the division. Yeah, in, in the schedule. Yep. In the schedule. The NFC the South schedule. schedule. In the division. Bad division uh, in the NFC South. They've got a soft they schedule. Have, they have no quirks. No, t They don't have two <laughs> games on the road this year right. in a row. I mean. <laughs> It, it lines up nicely. I don't know All I three of the <laughs> panelists say the Saints are going to the playoffs. We will be in West Virginia <laughs> beginning Tuesday. Back with more fourth down on four in a minute. Still ahead, Madison Johnson isn't your average everyday 13 year old. One of her dreams, becoming a rodeo star. We'll have her story after the break. She's a 13 year old athlete with dreams of turning pro and for up and coming rodeo star Madison Johnson, those dreams are not unrealistic. Leslie Spoon takes us to parody in St. Charles Parish to tell her story. Madison Johnson has had a love for horses for as long as she can remember. I was sitting on a horse as soon as I can sit up and I got my first saddle at four years old. She took a bear racing at the age of seven and was surprised to find she was a natural at the sport. I really was. It was kind of thrilling. <laughs> barrel racing is all about speed and grace, logging the fastest time without knocking over a barrel, though it can be dangerous. Very scary. <laughs> Horses go about 30 miles an hour while you're going around the pattern somewhere. I like the adrenaline rush and I just like the connection with the horse you get. It's really fun. Madison knows from experience that a rider and a horse not on the same page can be painful. When she was first learning how to ride at the age of three, her horse got spooked and took off towards a barbed wire fence. My instinct was to just jump off. So I jumped off and I fell on rocks and I busted my jawline and I broke my jaw and broke my arm. But instead of being scared, Madison couldn't wait to get back on the horse, literally. I just loved it so much, I couldn't let the fear get in the way of me. Just like young football and basketball players, Madison dreams of one day reaching the pinnacle of her sport. I have five years to make it pro and prepare for the world, the road. And in order to go pro, you have to earn so much money and you have to be in the top 15 of the world. She's off to a pretty good start, not even in high school yet, and she's already got a handful of sponsors. And since she's been competing, the prize money has piled up. Damn. Second year, I made 10000 throughout the whole year, and I have to file taxes now since I make so much money. What other 13-year-old do you know filing a W-2 form? And Madison puts that money right back into the horses. And feed and hay and making sure them stalls are shaving, have shavings and all. The parody native, soon to be an eighth grader at J.B. Martin Middle School, is wise beyond her years. But she has the talent, chemistry with her horses, and confidence. They have some pretty tough competitors in the world, but 
in my opinion, I think I'm up there with him. Leslie Spoon, fourth down on four. All right, thanks, Leslie. Meanwhile, this week in nearby Luling, a special send off for some special athletes headed to the Special Olympics. The World Games are in Los Angeles this year, and this group of Louisiana natives are headed there to compete. We're back with more fourth down on four in a minute. Aaron Nola might turn out to be the best major league pitcher LSU has ever produced. Sunday, Nola got win number one of his big league career as the Phillies routed the Cubs. Nola struck out six and gave up four runs, but that's because he had a big lead and he did his job by throwing strikes. Aaron Nola is just 22. He changes speeds dramatically. He has pinpoint control and all of his different pitches look the same coming out of his hand. Today was win number one. Many more to come. Lions, Yellen, and I will both be in place in West Virginia Tuesday. Our training camp reports begin Tuesday at 10. For Lions, Leslie Spoon, producer Danny Rockwell, photographer Adam Nay, and all of us here at Eyewitness Sports, I'm Doug Mouton. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week on Fourth Down on Four.